One of the number one reasons why women struggle with dating and relationships today is that they choose men who are not ready for anything real. Ladies, there are lots of great relationship-ready men out here. However, you need to learn how to choose them. I wrote this book to teach you how to do just that. Get your copy of Choose Well, A Simple Formula to Determine the Best Man for You on Amazon today. It was almost evening. It's 536. I just wanted to jump on really quickly. I got to um, drop something off to my house and then I'm headed into the office tonight because I got appointments. But I just wanted to jump on really quickly. I got about 20 minutes to make this video. And I wanted to talk to the ladies. I wanted to talk to the single moms today about what a woman can do to help raise a masculine son. And I just want to start off this video by saying, no, women cannot technically teach a boy how to be a man. Okay, that goes without saying. I hope we know that. I, I don't know why I would have to say that, but maybe I have to say that because some of us don't know that. A woman by herself, all alone, cannot, in fact, teach a boy to become a man. Only a man can do that. So let me start this live off by saying that first, okay? Men raise men. Now, here's the second thing I'm going to say. That man does not have to be the boy's biological father. That man could be any good, healthy male role model. And honestly, the more the merrier. That's what women are not understanding. They are not being very uh, purposeful and intentional about having healthy male role models around their sons. That's what they're not doing. And even the single mom friends that I have, like they make a bunch of like excuses. They make a bunch of excuses and Let's say the child's father is genuinely not a good man. He's genuinely not a good person, not a good man, for whatever reason. However, I then counter and say, okay, find some good men. <laughs> find some good men for your son to be around. Put him in some sort of sports and introduce him to other dads and other other boys who are at sports with their dads and, and introduce him to some coaches and introduce him to some men at church and introduce him to some men in other groups like get men around your son and to me they're just full of excuses i don't understand and and then we can go so far as to say find a good healthy man to date like find a good healthy man to date that's that's one way you can find a good healthy man to date and slowly integrate that person with your children so I just want to take that straight away for anybody who's like, there's nothing a woman can do to raise a masculine man, or there's nothing a woman, you know, a woman can't make a man, a woman can't raise a, a boy to a man. Okay. So I just took that clean off the table. However, so, so y'all are not saying that because that's not what I'm saying. Okay. But I am going to give some of my thoughts and opinions on this because I believe that I have in fact, raised with the help of many men, with the help of many men, I have had something to do with the fact that my son is a, a young man, okay? Hold on one second. I'm going to run this in the house to my daughter. All right, y'all, I'm back. <laughs> I apologize, but I said I'm going to start this video and do what I need to do until I get to work. So I believe I have raised a very good young man. 
I believe I've raised a very moral and ethical young man, and I have assisted other men in raising a good man. I'm gonna lift this up because this, I don't know what it is. It's got the camera going all weird. Okay, so here are some things that I did, and I'm gonna encourage single moms to do something similar because I'm seeing a lot of single moms, they're making some rookie mistakes and you, you can't, <laughs> you need to understand this about raising children. You get one shot. That's what a lot of people don't recognize. You get one shot to raise your children. There are no do-overs. There are no, well, let me know. <laughs> Once they're adults, they're technically adults. And some of y'all are trying to raise a <laughs> and you only get one shot. So that's for all my mothers of, of children, boys and girls, that your children are young. Like you get one shot, okay? So please do it right the first time because that, that's really the only time. <laughs> the only time is the first time, okay? So here's some things I'm going to suggest to single moms that I think were very helpful, very instrumental in the raising of my son and all my children, but I'm gonna specifically talk to my son. So when my son was nine or 10 years old, one of the things I did quite often was I encouraged chivalry. I told him what that word meant, I gave him the definition of it, and I gave him some examples of chivalry. And again, other men, men, men that were dating me, or his father, or his grandfather, or his uncles, they also did this. They also said, yes, you want to make sure your mom, your sisters, you hold the door open for them, you hold the car door open for them. You want to protect them. You want to make sure they're good. You want to make sure that wherever it is you all are going, that the women that you're with are protected. And so I started talking about this. I started have, having the men in our lives talk about it. And nine, 10 years old, that's what I encourage. You know, if, if you're out with us, if it's me and your sisters, that's how I want to see you conduct yourself. The other thing I did was from maybe 11 or 12, I started to allow my son to make decisions. I allowed my son to make decisions for himself, for us. One of the things that I would do every now and again is we would go out to eat and I would ask his opinion about, hey, what do you think is good here? What do you think I should order? What do you think, you know, is what looks really good? And I asked his opinion a lot because I wanted him to get comfortable with making decisions. I wanted him to get comfortable with being decisive, okay? And sometimes, like, he would make a suggestion. I was like, oh, that's a really good suggestion, okay. When the waitress or waiter comes back, can you order that for me? So I would even go a step further. He would order for himself. He would order for me. Sometimes he would order for his sisters. But I was already grooming him to be a leader. I was grooming him to take responsibility. I was grooming him to be in charge. Because in my mind, that's, that's a man's God-ordained role, is to be a healthy leader. Now, a lot of men today... You know, they don't have a clue how to lead. They haven't had much, uh, they haven't had much practice leading. And so they really don't know how to lead because they haven't had much practice leading. Uh, and that's unfortunate. And there's lots of reasons for that. But yeah, but I was doing that with my son pretty young. When my son turned 12, I officially told him that he was going to start washing all of his clothes. He was going to start, you know, cleaning the bathroom. There were certain duties that I gave to my son that I said, yeah, these are now your duties. These are the things that I expect you to do. Now, when he was, I think he was 10, he took over the care of our pets. So he took over the care of the dog, the cats, you know, he was taking care of the pets and my daughter was cleaning the cat box. But when he turned 12, I said, well, we need to learn how to cook. We need to learn how to clean your bathroom. You need to, you need to wash all of your clothes. I'm not going to wash any more of your clothes. <laughs> I remember that conversation and the look that he gave me about it because he was just like, what? <laughs> I got to do all this? Yeah. 
Yeah, you need to become responsible. And one of the ways you're going to do that is by learning how to take good care of yourself. And so my hope is that my son will one day get married and he'll have a, a beautiful wife, a very capable, feminine, beautiful wife. However, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. So I made sure to train all of my children in how to cook, how to clean, how to wash their clothes, how to take care of their pets, how to do very basic things in life. And keep in mind, all the while, there are other men in his life, his father, his uncles, his grandfather, two of the men that I dated, they're all pouring into him. Other men in our church, like they're all pouring into him. They're all talking to him. They're all doing things with him. Okay. And around maybe 14, 13, 14, uh, I had the sex talk with my kids when they turned nine. So nine was the sex talk. Then I did it again around 11 or 12. It was the, it was the human sexuality. So it was the human sexuality talk first. Then it was the sex talk around 12. Then around 14, uh, we kind of had it again. And we talked a little bit about pornography. I didn't dive deep into pornography. But, you know, I'm going to be honest. My son eventually found pornography, right? He eventually stumbled upon pornography. And maybe when he was about 16, 17, I, I recognized that he was, you know, dibbling and dabbling. And I was like, uh-uh, <laughs> like we're not doing that. Um, but these are the things that you have to be bold enough, that you have to be brave enough to talk to your sons about. You have to talk to him about sex and sexuality. You have to talk to him about, you know, and, and, and remember, the men in his life were doing the same thing. It wasn't just me. They were talking to him about sex and sexuality. They were talking to him about the morals and ethics of sex and sexuality, same as I was. Um, but there were a lot of things I expected from my son, right? I expected him to start, like, locking up the house at the end of the night. I expected him to, uh, around 13, 14, he started cutting the grass. He started working with me out in the yard and just doing a whole lot of physical things. So when he's, like, 14, he's talking to me, and my girls are, you know, doing stuff in the house, but he... He got a little, you know, he got a little beside himself one day when he was 14. And he just very directly said, like, why, why do you make me do all this? Why do I have to do? And he named all the things. I said, son, because you got a member swinging between your legs. Like, you, what are you talking about? Because you're a man. You are physically stronger than a woman. And so I have assigned you to all of the physical tasks that require your strength, your upper body strength. The girls are doing the other tasks that I believe, you know, women do. And one thing I've taught my children, and it's funny because if you talk to them now, they're both 21, my twins and my daughter who's 24, they think the gender roles are hilarious. Like they are Gen Z all day. They think the gender role thing is hilarious until, you know, one of them has to do something the other one of them is supposed to do. Then it's not so funny. So when my daughter, you know, is, is, is told to cut the grass, now she has, a, oh, well, girls don't do this. Oh, I thought she didn't believe in gender roles. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, it don't work for them. Okay? So they know how I feel. They know I'm traditional. They know I believe in gender roles. I believe in doing things God's way. I've always talked with my kids like that. God designed men a certain way, and he designed women another way. So... We're going we gonna to go with God's great design for men and women. That's what I trust. That's what I know and believe. But, yeah, he got a little beside himself. And I said, look, you, as long as you got that member swinging between your legs, this is what I expect of you. I expect you to protect. I expect you to provide. I expect you to one day procreate with the woman you're married to. Like, those are the three Ps that we know of men to do. But, yeah, I am... You are a male. You know, you are a male on your way to becoming a man. And I have expectations of you as a male. And so, you know, he went through some ups and downs. He went through some periods where, you know, he got a little beside himself. He would talk back. He would get a little, you know, there was a period when he was 19 where he went down to his dad's house and he was down there for maybe five weeks. It wasn't very long. Um but I had had it. I was over it. I was like, yeah, bro, you need to get on up out of here. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you need to go on up out of here. 
and I took him to his dad's. He stayed down there for five weeks, and he got to he got to truly appreciate me. <laughs> he got to truly appreciate the mother that I am and all that I do. Cause he came back singing a new song, singing a new tune, and he's been singing that tune ever since. But ladies, here's the most important thing: you cannot nurture your son past the age of eleven. And y'all going to feel a way about that. Things that are older, people that are older, and things that can eventually take care of themselves, we do not nurture. My nurturing is for babies. My nurturing is for my plants. My nurturing is for my pets. That's it. Those are the things that I nurture. Grown men, I do not nurture. I support. I love them. I honor them. I, I respect them. I collaborate with them. I do a lot of things with grown men, but nurturing is not one of them. That is not a word that I would use. And then secondly, because I got to make this short, um, a lot of y'all are harder on your daughters than you are on your son. I don't, I'm hard on everybody. I'm an equal opportunity hard. If you don't know nothing about my channel by now, it is that I come for everybody. Okay? So I don't know why. People will watch one video of mine. Oh, she talking bad about the men. Okay, go to the next one. Oh, she talking bad about the woman. Okay, go to the next one. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to come for you. <laughs> so I don't know why we're confused about that. I, I'm an equal opportunity. I'm coming for you. So all of my kids know what I re require. They know what my standard is. And I would say this, my standard is a tiny bit higher for my son. I wouldn't say a whole lot higher, but it's a tiny bit higher. But my standards are high. My standards are pretty high. Okay. So what I keep seeing is moms making life easy for their sons. Moms, you know, coddling their sons. That's something I absolutely cannot stand is a mother coddling her son. That is pathetic. You have got to, if anything, make life harder for him, not easier. And not harder in a way of, like, abusive, but stop cleaning his room, stop washing his clothes, make him learn how to cook, make him take out the trash, make him cut the grass, make him take care of any pets you have. Tell him what your requirement is for men. That's what I've shown my, my son all my life. Like, this is my requirement for the men in my life, including you. You are going to protect and provide for me. You are going to protect and provide for your sisters in the home. That's my standard. This is what women like. This is what women don't like. You need to learn how to be decisive. You need to learn how to take initiative. You need to learn how to lead in a healthy way. And the number one thing that we need to say about leadership is they are good role models. That's what a lot of men miss. Y'all love telling people what to do. But you don't want to lead by example. That's my problem. If you want to be a good leader, be a good role model. So guess guess what can't make you a leader? You out here smoking weed all day. Guess what can't make you a leader? You out here drinking to intoxication. Guess what can't make you a leader? You out here running around the street cheating on everybody. You You can't lead. You can't lead with those behaviors. You're a poor role model. Cussing and fussing. And physically getting violent with people. No, you can't leave because you are a poor role model. <laughs> okay? So let's make that clear. My son no longer looks at porn because I was like, nope, we're not doing that. So I did all of these technological things to make sure he couldn't get it in my house. Did stuff to the phone, put an app on the phone, the whole nine. You can't watch that in my house. Okay? And healthy leaders do not sit around watching that. My son cut back on his video game playing. He started reading more. He, he, he works full time now. Like, yeah, he runs errands for me. He does things for me. But the expectation is that you be a strong, responsible young man. That you lead by example, not by telling people what to do. But ladies... You need to require something of your son. You need to have standards for your son. You need to have boundaries with your son. You need to let him know that, hey, this is what we're not going to do. And you need to let natural consequences fall. What are some natural consequences? 
if you don't do what I ask you to do and I pay your phone bill, your phone gets cut off. Your phone gets clean cut off in my house. You don't have no phone. Okay? And, you know, please don't mess with me. I will turn the, the, the AC off. I mean, I'm known to do a lot of weird stuff. I, I won't buy no food. Like, a lot of bad things are happening. I'll cut off the streaming service. Seriously. There will be consequences for insubordination in my house. I'll, look, I'll hurt myself trying to get you. <laughs> That's how bad I am. I, one time, my kids was acting a fool. They was in high school. I clean turned the internet off at my house. What's going on? Why ain't no internet? Because y'all don't know how to act. I, I hurt myself trying to get these fools. I had, look, here I am going into the office, 9 o'clock at night, trying to use my computer. So I play no games with my kids. That's why I don't have nobody on the pole. That's why they ain't got no kids of their own. That's why ain't nobody strung out. Ain't nobody high. Ain't nobody drunk. Because they know I don't play that. I have a standard that I set for myself. I'm a good role model. That's another thing. Ask my kids. Ask my kids what Anita is like behind closed doors. Do your mama drink? No. Do your mama smoke it? No. Your mama got any men sneaking in here past midnight? No. Your mama got any men sneaking in here at all? No. <laughs> what What else? Your mama cussing and fuck? No. Your mama hitting y'all? No. Okay, your mama on OnlyFans? She selling any tail? No. Like, they will tell you what my character is. I lead by example. Okay, so I don't tell my kids one thing and do another. I lead by example. And ladies, I need you to do that too. Be a good role model for your sons and your daughters, but hold them to a high standard. Hold yourself to a high standard. Okay? You shouldn't want more for your kids than you want for yourself. I never understood that. People that will put up with all this mess from somebody and then when their kid getting in a toxic relationship, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. And they looking at you like, you did it. You did it. You put up with him. <laughs> like, you let him cuss you clean out. You gave him money. You let, no, stop that. Stop that foolishness. All right, my clients are coming in. Y'all have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much. Single moms, keep your head up. I love you all. You're doing a fabulous job. And as always, stay open to love.